Okay. I welcome you now to the session after the break concerning late breaking and ongoing trials in nanomedicine. And it's an honor to announce uh, Professor Dr. Donald uh, Tomalia, who is an inventor and really a pioneer in the um, field of dendromere based nanotechnology in nanomedicine. And I would like to ask you to start with your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. And I think we have the confusion somewhat re resolved. But in any case, uh, I would like to take you very quickly through some very interesting uh, events we've been involved with concerning the use of SARNA with dendimers for the treatment of cancer. And uh, in the process of uh, uh, developing these, uh, this, these techniques, um, we uh, have been using some new concepts that I'll introduce here shortly. But first, I come from Michigan. Uh, we are the uh, uh, makers of these very uh, monodispersed, very uh, well-defined nanoparticles uh, called dendermers. But we are interested in all soft nanoparticles as well as hard nanoparticles that may be used much like we use atoms to create compounds, etc., and we'll save that story for another time. I work very uh, uh, carefully with, or very uh, strongly with John Hopkins, Virginia Commonwealth University, University of Pennsylvania. I have appointments at each of these universities in physics and chemistry, as well as the University of Copenhagen. Now, very quickly, two concept slides before we get into the practical about the clinic that we are proceeding toward. I like to think of the uh, organization of our uh, hierarchy from the atomic level to the nanoscale level in terms of the so-called critical quantized building blocks. And uh, there are six critical design parameters associated at each level, at the atomic level, the molecular level, and the nanoscale level. We are very familiar at the molecular level if you've been designing drugs or pharmaceuticals because we oftentimes refer to the manipulation of those six design parameters as QSAR. We're trying to figure out quantitatively what kind of structure activity relationships we might find. We have a very similar kind of opportunity at the nano level and we will refer to those as the so-called quantitative CNDP structure activity relationships involving the manipulation and engineering of these six including surface chemistry, those six critical nanoscale design parameters. And I'll show you how we use them very effectively in creating a new dendimer vector for delivering SARNA for the treatment of liver cancer. Now, very simply, several years ago, in fact, in a paper that we have coming out here shortly from the Journal of Internal Medicine from the Karolinska Institute, uh, we uh, describe in language that hopefully will be pleasant for physicians to understand how we use these critical nanoscale design parameters to make predictable nanoperiodic property patterns and in the process develop many new nanotherapeutic and nanomedicine type rules. This talk now, the practical part, is very simply about how we engineered PAMAM dendromer vectors and showed that we could treat liver cancer and remediate them by upregulating proteins using an SA, not an SI, but an SA RNA sequence with our PAMAM dendromers to make the so-called the dendroplexus. And we showed that by engineering these critical nanoscale design parameters, we could really optimize costs, benefits, and performance features by simply engineering those simple six critical nanoscale design uh, parameters that I showed on the previous slide. Conclusions are, we indeed have seen very favorable expression, protein expression, by upregulation. We have successfully reduced tumor burden, and we have improved liver function in a clinically relevant liver cirrhosis model. Now, just to remind you again, this is not SIA RNA, SI RNA which we know the world has seen many publications, many patents. We're talking about 
small activating RNA therapy where there are less than 10 publications in the whole literature. And we recently got one that is now part of that 10. And that is to be shown here in the next slide. But before we go there, our protocol was simply this. Intravenous injection of this SARNA dendromer, uh, dendroplex three times over 48 interval, uh, hour intervals in one week to 10 uh, liver cancer models versus 10 control models. What we observed were increased levels of this, the proteins as well as the albumin mRNA, a threefold increase in the albumin secretion, over 30% improvement in circulating albumin serum, 50% decrease in cell proliferation, and the tuber burden was decreased by 80% with a 40% reduction in neo, preneoplastic transformation markers. All these genes were up, that we observed were uh, upregulated and were found to be enriched for tumor suppressants and positive regulators of the cell differentiation. It was so exciting, we were ready to go to phase one clinical trials a little over a year ago. However, I'll tell you where the story changes. But first, this, these are the key people that were involved, and you can see are very favorable uh, control versus uh, uh, the uh, remediated liver, tum tumor burden reduced, albumin level enhanced. These are the key people. John Rossi from the City of Hope developed all of the SARNA sequences we're talking about here today. Ling Ping, we used her flexible core PAMAM uh, uh, derivatives as the vectors. And Professor Nagi Habib is the chief oncologist at the Imperial College in London who orchestrated all of this uh, at his school. What was this dendromer? What was so special about this dendromer? This dendromer that Ling Ping developed was a flexible cord dendromer, and it was shown to be better than three times more efficient in transfection and substantially less toxic compared to any other commercial gold standard. However, they came to us a little over a year, almost two years ago, Rossi, Habib, and Ping, and said, Tamalia, we can't scale up this dendromer to kilogram quantities for the clinic. Can you help us? So I became involved with them a little over two years ago. And what did we do? We used these critical nanoscale design parameters and as a means to get quickly back to a dendromer product that we could scale for clinic. And that's what the rest of this story is about. We developed a dendromer that was similar but quite different structurally than the ping dendromer. And all we, and I can't go into detail because it's proprietary, I mean, there are, we are still filing patents, but we use simple concepts and paradigms that were taught in these earlier publications where we worked on the optimization of flexibility, surface chemistry, and size primarily. We, did, we didn't change the architecture, the element of composition, or the shapes too much. However, Just to give you an idea of what happens when you change such things as size, you can very nicely manipulate whether or not this nanoparticle will be extravagated, uh, extravagated go, whether or not it will remain in the bloodstream or will be leaving the bloodstream, or you can design and engineer it to ha go to the liver preferably as a function of size, as opposed to the kidney. And those were all parameters that we were able to engineer into this new dendromer prototype that we designed. Furthermore, we were able to remediate and, in fact, improve toxicology properties by using CNDP engineering on size, surface chemistry, and flexibility. And we very dramatically changed and enhanced our features for nanotoxicology. And these are some general trends shown here. So by CNDP engineering, one develops these beautiful nanoperiodic patterns as a function of size in this direction, as a function of surface chemistry in this direction, or as a function of shape or flexibility. And these are all issues that we talk about in some detail in this new uh, about to be released Journal of Internal Medicine review. Most importantly, 
Now the nanoscientist has the opportunity to really optimize important features such as excretion modes, nanotoxicology, pharmacokinetics, biodistributions, all of which we talk about here, all uh, pretty much as you can see illustrated here by simply manipulating or engineering the parameters as shown. Another real surprise was recently working with Professor Mogimi from the University of Copenhagen, we have now begun to see that these trends, these nanoperiodic property patterns, appear to go into the area of complement activation in that recent publications by Moeen Mogimi has shown that by manipulating surface chemistry or architecture, he can begin to understand predictably how to enter into any one of these pathways or to avoid them. One real interesting surprise, working with Professor uh, Jorn Christensen at the University of Copenhagen, by simply engineering the CNDPs of size and surface chemistry, we have now recently discovered what is equivalent to the first organic quantum dot based on Denimers, where the in we have developed sufficient intrinsic fluorescence in the Pan Map Denimers series based on this engineering that we have autofluorescence that is suitable for gene vectors or cell labeling. And here you can see the blue. I don't know if the light is too light or is too high, but you can see there the blue uh, dots here are the dendimers that are fluorescing intrinsically. We have no external or no traditional fluorophore whatsoever. These are simply the PAMAM dendimer structures that have been CNDP engineered to give these beautiful glowing spots here low toxicity compared to the Boanda or the inorganic uh, quantum dots that we're so used to hearing about. This is, in my opinion, one of the first examples of, of these kinds of materials. And finally, we have used the CNDP engineering to very uh, uh, carefully produce new monodispersed dendimers that I think will be the gold standard for the PAMAM dendimer uh, area. And here are some of the uh, electrophorograms uh, of the generations 0 through 5 of these PAMAM dendimers. And any of this concept or background that we talked about if it didn't come through clearly, can be found in chapter 8 of this book shown here. And finally, I'd like to complete and wrap up this talk by saying, in the past, we've always depended on QSAR for the development or optimization or design of our small molecule pharmaceuticals. Now, as I hopefully have shown you, we have this opportunity to use so-called QCNDP-SAR for optimizing nanoparticle uh, performance and uh, properties, all of which is described in great detail in this uh, article that is about to appear. And if Professor Bing, Bing Fidel is in the audience, I want to thank him because he helped me as a chemist. There he is. As a chemist and as a physicist, he helped me to t put these concepts that I had too much math in, too much chemistry, too much physics, he helped me to put them into the physician's language. So hopefully you will enjoy this publication. Thank you, Ben, for that nice coaching. And I would like to wrap up by just simply thanking these uh, people and entities, Professor Habib, Ling Ping, Rossi at Beckman Institute, and the Cosmophos team, all of whom I talk to on a regular basis, including Mogimi, Christensen, and Panos and the National Science Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. If you, there are an urgent question, I would like to ask now. Otherwise, we will have a panel after the whole session. Is there any urgent question? Yeah, Panos. Hey, Don, here. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this great talk, as always. Um, if you can tell us a few things about the Imperial College uh, uh, clinical trial, if you have any data, I mean, when you start or Are, we are planning to start. We, we uh, that, that, that's a very good question. Thank you, Panos. I, I probably didn't in, uh, mention it in the talk. We are uh, now evaluating our preclinical data from Taiwan, and it continues to look very good. We 
are still hoping to be on schedule for a clinical trial within the next one to one and a half years, if that was your question. Great, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.